there is nothing like connecting deeply with trees. Discover the not so secret lives of trees. Greetings, epic adventure seekers. I'm Ali Bierman, your guide to demystifying your world. And you're joining us now for Let's Get Metaphysical Connecting Heart and Mind. Today's guest, Flora Rudolph, will expand on what I've often shared about plants, trees in particular. Before we jump in, I have a quick question for you. When you're finally going to take your life off of the very beaten path, you know, the one you've always followed, blindly followed, and you wish and you hope for something to change, well, it's time to take a step in a new direction. And I'm going to offer you the gift, step in a new direction, to download the link will be in the show notes. Flora Rudolph has been a channeler, painter, realtor, designer, arts organization co-founder and director. And then she met a fir tree and that changed her life forever. Now, you know, I often talk about the wisdom of plants and share some secrets of how trees live and function in the world. And then I met Flora and I was drawn even deeper into nature because I live with nature surrounding me. There are forests everywhere. By the way, she's also an official forest bathing guide. You heard that right. And you want to know the difference between forest bathing and going for a hike. So stop whatever you're doing, because this chat will open your eyes and your ears and your mind. And I'm going to let Flora tell you what happened for her. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our show, Flora. <laughs> and I love how your name introduces you as <laughs> clearly meant to be. Hi, thank you, Ali. That was wonderful. So, should we start at the beginning of it? Sure. Okay. So I was really restless and I had to have a change in my life, some sort. I had no idea what it was. I mean, everything looked great on the surface. It was working, you know, the whole thing was working. And then, but there was just this big restless discontent. My life felt kind of like cardboard. Um, and so I was just called intensely to go to the trees for the first time in my life, to the mountains. Um, cause I'd always gone to the beach when I was trying a soul searching adventure there. Um, and I would find, I found this hike. I was just directed to it. It's almost like I was just doors open and doors open and the energy flowed through my body like crazy during all of this time period. And I, um, found this hike would go back there a couple times a week. It was like an hour and a half drive each way and then a five mile hike and I loved it to pieces. And I would hike back to this waterfall and I would sit there and receive messages and poems and just deeply in it. And then one day coming back down the trail, um, just bounding down the trail, it felt like oh, this big fir tree just stepped in front of me. And it was so like startling in my, path, in my awareness. I put my hands on it instinctively and leaned in and felt this jolt of presence coming from that tree. It was exactly what I was looking for. It was like no mind, complete awareness, complete presence. And I really had to have more. It was like, wow, that is exactly the energy I'm looking for, the transformation I'm looking for. So from that point, I started really hanging out with trees, investigating trees, kind of lying around on the roots and things. And then um, a couple months later, about two and a half months later, I was um, in an accident, car accident, and was hit by a truck and received a traumatic brain injury that um, threw me way out of everything I had known. So not only did I receive this incredible transmission from the tree when I was asking for change, I received enormous life change um, on all levels. Everything I had built and constructed and even thought was me 
left. It was um, an incredible period of soul searching, dark night of the soul, asking why, 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 asking psychics, ask, doing the whole thing, everything you would think to do to fight, try to figure out and get your bearings again. Um, and at, about nine and a half years into that, I had enough going on with me that I went to the trees and just like, okay, I've got to have more. I've got to have more life, more going on here than what is available to me right now. And I wandered from species to species for hours, literally. Wow. Finally, I was just drawn to this, the hornbeams is where I landed. I never heard of them. It was just this grove of beautiful, it's just a huge, peaceful, playful community off by itself. And I walked in and I had, I never felt such peace and playfulness in my life. I've never felt such saturated peace coming from that group of trees. So I sat there for like about three hours um, asking for healing. And um, I received a message that I would meet a person who would be like a partner for me and to trust that person. And I kind of thought it was going to be my guy, but because that's you know what my mind did, but it wasn't. It was this amazing woman um, 3,500 miles away in Nova Scotia, and I'm in Portland, Oregon, and she was working on learning energy healing and to see if she could still transmit that long distance, if that would work. And so for nine months with FaceTime and uh, meditations and writing exercises, all of it, we healed me. It was like I couldn't go to the dentist because the lights would make me pass out for like a week, even with all the stuff on. And then I could. I couldn't do a web page by any means. And then I could. And then I enjoyed it. It was a, incredible. It just kind of came out of this. Um, maybe like 90, 95% out of the whole brain injury bit. And it's just like a rebirth, major rebirth for me. And at that time, I knew that this trees had so much to offer and that that uh, connection, I was just um, captivated by it. So I started wandering from species to species, meeting them and, and getting their different frequencies and their different energies um, and just fell in love with them. And the curiosity and the connection and the life force and vibrancy coming from these trees just, um, it was amazing. And from that, I made this deck of tree cards. There's 50 of them with their messages on the back. Wow. And um, so I had received the messages from the trees, so all the energy vibrations. Go back to my place and say, well, what has somebody else thought about this tree over time through all the lore and the history? And then look it up and it would be would match up exactly. So I knew I was really tuned into what we have always done as people because we have always gone to the trees. We have always gone to the trees. Now, when I work with people out in the trees individually or as a group, I find that everybody has a connection, a special connection because we remember it. It's like what we have always done. We've always gone that, uh, to trees for like our ceremonies, our healing, um, even our legal proceedings were done under trees, um, community gatherings, the whole, you know, network, networking that we did was in trees. Everything ceremonial was done with trees through all of our history and all of our time. In fact, when I started researching all this for a book that I wrote, it was, um, it's like most cultures through the world have believed that the first humans came from trees. Like if you were Scandinavian, it was Embla was the first female, and that was became elm. That was the elm tree. And Aska was the first male, and that's the ash tree. And every culture has kind of a different tree that it goes with. Mostly a lot of elms and ashes, some oak. Um, and it's just because when you think about it, they've been here like 350 million years on the planet, the oldest conifers. And we've been here maybe a couple hundred thousand. So imagine here we are and we're looking around and trees. It's like we get them, we know them, we have been with them 
through all of our time and they've been our teachers and our guides and are still our teachers and our guides if we tune into that. So that's a whole lot of information real fast. <laughs> um, and what I have found going forward is in working with people and just spending more and more time is just the most startling um, understanding that trees are really aware of us. They know when we're around them, just like they do. They are aware of the sun and the bugs and the birds and the animals that are around them. They know what's in their environment and they'll call to us. It's like they catch our attention when they have something to offer or exchange or want to connect. Um, this may sound a little wacky, but it's the most wonderful thing, because if you imagine this entire universe full of trees that's connecting with us and we're not alone, we're connected with all of this, this life force, obviously, we're the same thing. Um, it's just the most supportive, magical place to be. And I know because I, I spent my life up in trees. <laughs> I just always felt safe up in trees. You know, when I was in college, I had a date to go tree climbing. I don't know if the guy thought I was nuts, but <laughs> yeah, just and I'm seeing looking out in my yard, and there must be. I don't know, eight, 10 or more different kinds of fir trees. And then all these big, huge, they're hundreds of feet tall and we get a lot of high winds. And I watch the trees and sometimes they get blown over. Unfortunately, it's not that infrequent, but I wonder, do you, cause you have a deeper connection than I do. I, I feel the energy but yeah. I don't communicate quite the way you do. I'll feel like if there's an area where some violence has happened, the trees will tell me that. But do you have an idea if when I see the trees, you know, bending in the high winds, do you think that they have some kind of feeling? Because surely they have a, an awareness of what's going on. I don't know, but my take would be that they, they're totally aware. They're present. They don't have a mind that's going wacky with all of that situation. Um, they, they're very, they're just in this flow, you know? Um, so I don't think that they take it the way we would, which is like, oh my God, this is such a big tragedy. I think they're going with it more like ponderosa pine specifically comes to mind that tree that just shocked me I haven't I don't think about this but it's it's 100 percent 24 7 contentment that's what it transmits wow it's like wow that just throws my mind off right obviously which is good but it's um it's content it still gets everything done that it needs to get done. It's creative. It does all of its tree life. But it's just content with everything on the planet and in its world. So I'm expecting that that's more the perspective of a tree when something's going on. Right? Yeah. I had one of my dearest trees is a Chinese white pine. And um, they pruned it. Um, mm -hmm. And I could, that, that tree was, that was pain, that was suffering, tree was suffering. Um, uh, and I was really devastated by it because I could feel that what had happened to it and could do nothing, of course, about it. But it, it's recovered and its vitality is back and its strength is back. It just really, you know, was a jolt. Um, so, I mean, there, the more that, um, we discover about trees because it's people are really into like what are they what are from a science perspective, um, which is great. Um, the more we find that they really do have what we would call we try to make them like humans, I think. Mm. You know, they have like the sort of 
almost like a pulsing system. They have like almost like a nervous system. They almost have like this brain, right? But it, see, that makes sense but if you if you see things from an evolutionary perspective, right? But it's also like um, I think it's we, but they're not humans. They're trees. It's another species, but they are another life being on the planet with us at the same time. And they're generous, supportive, filled with their own vibrational frequency all the time, constantly offering it. Um, it's incredible. It's um, just like when I go to be with, if I get um, agitated or whatever, and I um, sometimes I go there because I need that solace from them and the connection. But mostly I go there just because I love to be with them. It's just, I, I, I always think I'm going to see this tree. When I go up there, I'm excited to go visit this particular tree, whatever it is in my mind. And it's almost, never, that almost never happens. <laughs> I get there, um, I'm talking there, I'm talking at the Arboretum, which is close to me, where I live. Um, and then I'm completely drawn to a different tree, which is perfect for me, right? Yeah. And it's just, and then I'm led to the next one and the next one until it's just blissed out saturation of this lovely energy. So if you think of meeting an incredibly grounded, wise being that transmits a certain frequency all the time and may or may not provoke messages for you, right? But it all, but it, it transforms your own energetic frequency. The more time you spend with, just like with a person, the more time you spend with them, the more you become that, you know? Um, it's like with the horn beams, when I, um, I remember having an instance with them where there was chaos everywhere, it was super loud, it was rush hour all around outside there. And I, all of a sudden I was like, wow, where's this peace coming from that I was feeling? And it was me. It was just like, wow, that's coming from me. Because I've been hanging out with this horn beams, these horn beams for quite some time. Um, it's like that. It is just from every aspect for like a ginkgo is this eternal constancy. Just this eternal constancy, like a Buddha nature. So if, in fact, they're planted by temples quite a lot. And those are, they're like a living fossil. They're like 150, 200 million years old. And they're the same on the fossilized form is the same as they are now, which is just, there's a few trees that I'm aware of that are like that, the Don Red with the Ginkgo and such. But that energy, you, to learn to take that in is quite a task to be eternally constant in your emotional realms, in your being, just in your whole vibrational frequency. You know, you spend some, you need to spend time with that tree to get that to really take hold in you and to develop it. It's like a spiritual teacher in that way. Um, and then I, I remember when I was working on all this, I was like, oh yeah, Buddha sat under a tree until he got it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so the cool thing that scientists are doing right now is like back in the 1980s, scientists um, in Japan who love trees thought, huh, why do people feel so good when they're out in the forest? So they started studying all of this forest, you know, body reactions to being in the trees versus in a city for the same periods of time and all of this set up to make it scientific. And they found that people who spend time in the trees um, hours a month gives you sustained benefits of higher, it increases your immune reaction to um, your immune system cells. Um, it, you get better sleep, maybe like 22 minutes a night is what they came to. Um, and it helps with ADD, ADHD and anxiety and depression and all of these states and it brings you back. Like, you know, balances you out. And they found that this was consistent and people in the cities, none of that happened when they were doing the same kind of walk with the monitors and such. And then they've since found other scientists have been like, what happens with tree roots? 
what are they doing, right? Besides, we know about the whole fungal interaction, fungus interaction, that synergy. The tree roots connect with other trees and they have a network. They send messages to trees around them if there's um, a bug infestation or a warning of some sort. Uh, they send chemicals out so that uh, it repels those predators. Um, they also take care, specifically, they send nutrients to trees, some of their sugar, um, to trees that need it, and especially to their offspring. There's a scientist, Suzanne Simard, who is, um, is working on that discovery. So it's just fascinating because it parallels, parallels what I have been doing from an intuitive place. You know, um, no, just realize, just experiencing the extreme vitality of trees and the individuality of them. So to, it's just like when you go meet a person, they have an energy field, you know, and each tree has its own energy field as well. So it's like um, this incredible discovery and connection that I can't even I don't know what I would do without it at this point. It's been so magical for me. So then, of course, I want everybody else to know about it, right? Right. <laughs> I'm listening to you, and I'm seeing her looking at it, my yard. Yeah. And I do my qigong to just one particular tree. There you go. Yeah. So as I'm listening, I'm realizing there are hundreds of trees here. But I always do it to the same one because I clearly have a feeling with it. And yeah, I think that, that didn't dawn on me until I was just listening to you. That's right. That tree is calling to you and you have a connection, yeah. a relationship with that tree, right? Yeah. And, and what you were saying about when the tree was pruned, I hadn't really thought about trees being like every big tree that's near the house gets cut down because it's dangerous to have big trees when it's windy right near your house. But when I, if I'm cutting grass or if I'm dumping out water, I always warn the one that it's coming. So it's not shocking. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, you got to go on with that tree. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah. Uh, it, that's traumatic if a tree gets trimmed or cut. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I don't know how traumatic, and I don't know if it's traumatic, different traumas for different species or a different time. I don't know that yet or at that depth, but I know that it is from that. If you're listening to this and you don't have any trees to go to that are close, or you don't think you do, you don't have a forest. It's, um, it doesn't have to be, a forest is the best. An old growth forest is worth the pilgrimage to do that. It's such an, because the trees are completely in their own system and you really feel it. You don't, there's no way you're gonna escape feeling that magic and that energy and that transformation that's gonna happen. Um, but if you don't have access to that, like immediately or often, you can just go to a tree outside your yard um, on the street corner um, and just one that catches your attention. Just go up and, and connect with it. Put your hands on it and lean in and let your energy centers connect with that tree. Get out of your head. Smell it. That's the, the, the smell, the scent of a tree really helps you connect quickly mm -hmm. and um, the movement of the tree, just notice and the texture, <laughs> just notice also the tree's environment, what it's seeing, where it lives, what it's with all the time for this lifetime that it's doing. And just take in that, it, get out of your head, stay there for 10 to 20 minutes. So give yourself time to really um, tune into the energy that you're feeling from that being and you will be delighted. Um, I've had people just go, oh my God. And that's like, they get the tree. It's, a, it's an, this essential shift that you take from out of your own 
just seeing the trees as background to meeting the tree as um, a being, another being. The other part is like, that's why I, one of the reasons I made these cards is like the scientists in Japan who were doing all the forest bathing discovery decide to also discover that like they know that people who in a hospital who have just a plant mm -hmm. are healthier than people who don't get better faster and all that. Um, and also just a picture of a tree, an image can bring you to it. So that's why they're photographs and not drawings or paintings. Oh, wow. That's, they're beautiful. They're amazing. They were done by a beautiful photographer here, Lorejo Daniels. Wow. Um, they're so good. So that's the point of that, that you can just have that all the time with you and the messages on the back from the trees. So I'm also offering, if you want, I'm offering like a, a free three card reading if you uh, just send me your question I'll, I'll, you can get the link for that and just send me your question and i'll do a reading for you oh. send it back, email it back so when people find you i mean i wouldn't know to look for somebody like you <laughs> how do you get your word out there so people know pardon me how do you get your word out so people know to find you because I'm sure there are lots of people like me who love trees. There are a ton of people who love trees. And I'm I'm trying to figure that out right now, how to get this out. I got yes. the website, meetingtrees.com. And um, I have an email list where I notify people and send people different videos or um, what a, just different experiences that I've been having with trees and update them on things. Um, so just all trying all the vehicles on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. So, so I also, could, I always like to hike and my whole family, everybody likes to hike. Yeah. But then I read, it was either Sierra Club or the Smithsonian, this whole article on forest bathing. I said, what? Mm hmm So... What is the difference between forest bathing and just, I, I used to live near the Appalachian Trail. So yeah. I was down that trail Great. like almost every day, but that's, I wasn't connecting with the trees. I was just loving being in nature. Right, and, and feeling good because you were in the trees, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, the forest bathing term came from the scientists in Japan who were making all this discovery. And because it's a full sensory, this is what it is. Forest bathing is a full sensory immersion in the magic of the woods. And it's a slow, meditative, mindful um, walk. It's not a hike, hike. It's not necessarily geared to exercise. It's geared to more meditative um, a walk where you engage your senses, your smell, your taste even, of what is this, what's, what does it taste like out here right now? That's fun. Um, your touch, the vision of what's going on and uh, what's moving right now. So you just, um, in the official forest bathing, um, like when you're actually doing it with a person or um, on a trail that's been designated as for forest bathing, it's, there are questions that you ask along certain sites. Mm -hmm. um, I use a little bit of Qigong and meditative practices just to get people into that tuned in state quickly. And then um, tune in to like the senses, just start with one by one. What are you smelling? What are you hearing? But spend time. First you go connect with the tree. Then you ask these questions at each of the stops. And think about your experience. It really brings you into a whole other place. It's like a deeply meditative, um, connected place with the trees and with your own being. And you you might, you probably will receive answers and information if you have, especially if you have bring some kind of like um, question or something you're wanting to know about or just figure out in your life or move forward into, you'll probably get that because it tunes you into that bigger place. Um, it's just, it's beautiful. People really, um, it's, go into it. 
when they're doing it. And it's just, and you come out the other side, just very peaceful and happy, you know, because all of this lets your joy come out, which is there all the time. And you're an official guide. And that article said there are official guides because everything that you just said, it's like if I walked into a forest, I wouldn't know all that stuff. Yeah, so I am a guide, yes. And I do um, I do guides with people directly, you know, taking group or taking individuals out. But I also do um, self-guided forest bathing. Oh, that I work with a place, an organization of some sort, and put in place, um, go and scope out a trail um, and the different stops, and then create the whole walk and either have it as a, a written document or um, a recording that people can use as they go through it. Wow. Which I think is pretty, it's much more personal and people don't, they can take their time and do it whenever they want. Yeah. And also like not feel kind of embarrassed or anything. You're not used to hugging a tree, you know? Uh, so it's, um, I do th all of that aspect of it. Plus taking people out individually, um, pull a few cards, like two or three cards, and then go meet those trees, their cards, their trees that have come up for them. And that's pretty great. So. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> I look forward to seeing your cards everywhere. I live in a, a fancy little town that has all these fancy little stores in the bookstores. They're perfect for your cards. <laughs> Great. Let me know what they are. <laughs> I, I will for sure. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm in the point of like, hmm, what do I do with these? Um, now that I have them done, you know, but um, they're also, I color coded them on the back. They're different colors. Ah, uh, because sorry, I, I just got this when I was doing it. It just came through me that um, there's really like underworld trees that really help you process the unconscious stuff that wants to get released. Wow. And there's like people that trees that will bring you to joy. There's trees for abundance. There's trees for like open hearted generosity and opening just opening your heart centers. There's trees for like ambition, you know, there's all these different trees. So I put them in these groups and it's like a soul journey. How that goes. That is cool. <laughs> so that's another dimension to the reading. So when you pull one, like, um, what have I got? Redwood. Um, that's a guardian tree. You know, and you can imagine that redwood would be a guardian tree. <laughs> Yeah. Right? <laughs> but there are some earth guardians like that that are just these wow. spirits around us so i wish i could get you into my yard across from the other side of the country and you could <laughs> oh, oh i would love to so much yeah i would love it yeah Definitely. oh my gosh this has been absolutely extraordinary i'm so glad that we met it's like wow yeah, thank you, Allie. So send me a, um, a little video of your trees. So I, I could do that. If you want. And I'll see if I can know what they are. <laughs> yeah, I've got one tree that's just banging on the kitchen windows. It's once to get in <laughs> with the wind, I'm afraid. The branches are small. I don't think it'll smash through, but it's pretty noisy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hello. <laughs> well, I, I think it wants to talk to me. I, I think mm -hmm. it's great. Probably does. Yeah. Allie. <laughs> right. <laughs> there's a, oh, there's a really fun thing to do. Um, if you're hanging out with the tree and you feel real connected and the, you know, you can like a branch that's not too, you know, whatever. And just say, tree, if you hear me, touch me. Oh, cool. Of course. That makes sense. And you stay there for a while and it will move toward you and touch you. It's the coolest thing. Well, I study plants a lot. I personally uh -huh. believe they're smarter than we are in a different way of smart. Exactly. And so I, I read a lot of science books on plants and trees. And there was some kind of experiment where the 
I think those trees were sending out their energy and it was going like light years out, which no human can or animal can do. Right. Like, wow. No, they're amazing. I mean, like, I mean, I love my cat, but there's, they're very different. That kind of connection with that species, it's just totally, it's more like connecting with the human, with the animal, I think. The trees are way out there. They're amazing. They've just been here forever. They know the earth. They're in the earth. You know, they know how all the rhythms of the planet, you know? Yeah, you look at any roadway or any paved tennis court and up comes to the roots of the trees. Yeah, and right. <laughs> powerful. And I know one of the books that I read said, if you can sit still and watch a plant for an hour, you will see it turning completely. Yeah. Yeah, what you're saying about the branch. So I've sat and watched for a little while, but an hour I haven't done, but I will. <laughs> but it's, um, it's just so immediate. And we are in such bad need of connecting on our planet right now. Yeah. And not being in our heads, but being in our hearts and in our being, in our souls. And trees do that. Yeah. That's what they'll do with you and for you. And it's just, there's yeah. nothing like it. it. It must be an extraordinary experience to go on a forest bathing trip with you. Oh, <laughs> it's fun. And people just, it's just, you glow kind of after. People just kind of, yeah. ah, you know? Yeah. All, of that, all those burdens and worries are gone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I used to go on Appalachian Trail. I was always so relieved when I got back without getting lost because they had so many possible oh, right. ways to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much thank for doing you. what you do and for sharing all of that love with us today. It's extraordinary. Uh, thank and you. Everybody, all of flora's links will be in the show notes so you can take advantage of everything that she was talking about <laughs> and also remember to pick up your copy of step in a new direction and join our facebook group make some friends and ask <laughs> questions and if you do me a favor i appreciate your sharing with two friends uh this show because that way there'll be three of you who can talk about the shows <laughs> that we do. So everybody gets to grow and the word gets out and it spreads so more and more people will be able to join us and have these kind of different experiences. And that's what makes a difference in the world when we open, as far as was saying, our hearts and come from there. Yeah. I want to thank all of you for listening today. And remember to enjoy every moment. That's capital I N, capital <laughs> J O Y, because nothing happens out there. You experience everything within. And I'll see you here next time.